Every time you create a new project in Azure DevOps, you must choose what process or process template to use based on your working model. Let's see which one to use it and how to choose between them. This is the Three Minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coder Dave and welcome to a new episode of the Three Minutes series. In each episode, I will try and explain a concept, showcase a product or service, or yet teach you something and all in just three minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and if you want to learn about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub, just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new video. Today we talk about the process template that you need to choose whenever you create a new project in Azure DevOps. We will see what are the main differences between them and how to choose. Let's start the clock and get into it. There are four different default process templates that you can choose from out of the box in Azure DevOps. Basic, Agile, Scrum, and CMMI. Basic is the most lightweight of those, and as the name says, it's pretty basic and simplified. Scrum is the next most lightweight, and of course is tailored for teams using the Scrum methodology. Agile, as you can understand from the name, supports many Agile method terms. And finally, CMMI, which stands for Capability Maturity Model Integration, provides the most support for formal processes and change management. After this brief overview, let's see how to choose between them. Here we have the four different templates. Let's start with the basic process templates. As we've seen before, this is a simplified version of a process template. You can choose basics when your team wants the simplest model that uses only issues, tasks, and epics to track the work. With basic, tasks support tracking the remaining work only. Let's move to the agile one. Choose the agile template when your team uses agile planning methods. And those may include Scrum, even though we have a Scrum-specific template later. And also if your team tracks development and test activities separately. This process uh, works great if you want to track user stories and optionally bugs on the Kanban board or track bugs and tasks on the task board. In the Agile process, the tasks support tracking original estimate, remaining work, and completed work. Next one is Scrum. This process works great if you want to track product backlog items, PBIs, and bugs on the Kanban board, or break PBIs and bugs down into tasks on the task board. In general, this process supports the Scrum methodology as defined by the Scrum organization. So you can find in there all the keywords, if you will, and terminology that you expect. As in the basic one, with the Scrum process template, the tasks support tracking the remaining work only. And finally, CMMI. As we've seen, CMMI is great when your team follows more formal project methods. In fact, with this process, you can track requirements, change requests, risks, and reviews. Of course, with this process, you have support for formal change management activities. And with it, the task work item type supports tracking original estimate, remaining work, and completed work. Even though the basic template is less complex and looks like less complete than the other ones, Remember that the missing work items are not really missing, they are just hidden. In fact, if for example you use a test case in the test plans feature, you will be able to link that test case back to Azure boards, even if you're using the basic template. Finally, remember that those four process templates we've seen are just the out of the box ones. You can always create new ones by inheriting from one of those and changing how they work, adding new work item times, new rules, new fields, and so on and so forth. And we're done, let's stop the clock. Of course, there is much more to say about process templates and how they work, but I think this was quite an introduction. And I hope now you have the basics for deciding which one to use in your next project. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to go deeper in this topic. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.